Welcome in. A very happy 4th of July to everybody. Thank you for letting us be a part of it. My name is Tim and welcome to another edition of Talk About Watches Live. So this episode, what we're going to do is we actually have a series of mini episodes. So we're going to be visiting the Generation 4 Exoskeleton. We've got a huge deal from Santo. And of course, a lot of you guys are already getting in on, for example, that special Benris deal at just $49.99. There are crazy deals going on. Skywatch, of course. So we've got a lot of different segments that we're going to be getting into. Now, for those of you who already have our social media and or our email, all of the pricing has gone live, as you may already know, but if you didn't, now you do. So you can get over there right away. And for those of you catching this show now, there's a link, depending on how you're watching, either off to one side or underneath. Just click on that and you'll go immediately to the page that has all of the special 4th of July deals. So it's not necessary for you to wait to have the given watch or whatever come up on the screen. In fact, I encourage you to shop early because some of these are already in limited quantity since we sent the email out some time ago. In fact, let's talk about that. If you haven't yet joined our email list, you really need to do it. I promise we're not going to spam you. We hate spam too. We're not going to do that. You're going to get an email a day, but you'll have information for every available deal of the day. Plus, you're going to to get special insight in the flash sales and new brands that continue to join talk about watches and so on and you're going to get them ahead of pretty much everybody else now i say pretty much everybody else because the people that absolutely get it first are part of the closed group that's on facebook and to be in that group you need to be on the email list now once you're on that list you'll see an invite in the email where you can join and it's real simple. You just join it, and there's conversation. People share images and so on. But that group gets the insight first. And then some of these deals, like, for example, we still do the one-of-a-kinds every so often and so on, they've got first dibs on that stuff. So join that group and participate. But if you're not interested in that group, and I hope you are, you should be on the email list to get our updates and insights and so on. And it's very simple. You just go to any one of our major pages and talk about watches.com and sign up, and you're good to go. We never sell. We never share your information, so you are safe with us. Now, in addition to that, social media, of course, we are on, as you'll know, Facebook Live. We're also on YouTube Live. And for those of you who like other forms, we are also supporting Instagram. We support Twitter, and we also support Google+. Plus. So you'll get updates there as well. So obviously, you can follow us on any of those mediums, and we hope that you do. Now, as we're getting into tonight, Keep in mind that if payments become something that you need, we're happy to offer them. We go through PayPal credit, and that's a really flexible way to go because that's interest-free for six months. In fact, there's no money down, no payments, and no interest, and as long as the total is paid off by the due date, it's perfect because there's, as I stated, there, there's no interest, there's no payments, there's nothing down. And it, it's a much more flexible way to go, I think, than the traditional six pay option where you've got the rigid payments. And if you want to do that, just divide it out by four or six or three or whatever you want. But this way you can double down a month, skip a month, whatever. So that's going to be on the last page of checkout. You're going to see an option. Would you like PayPal credit? And just click that. And if you're good to go there, then you've got, as I stated, six months with nothing down, no payments, and no interest. So it's a great way to go. Okay, with that being stated, one other quick favor, if you would. We appreciate all of you guys that tune in and all of you that watch during the replays that we do. Please share this. It's one of the simple things, and you could really help us out in a major way. So please share this around on all of your social media. Hashtag talk about watches, and we really appreciate it. So thank you in advance for that. All right, without further ado, let's get underway and delve into the 4th of July celebration. So hey, everybody, joining us on our big 4th extravaganza, Barry Cohen. Barry, thanks for doing this, man. Happy 4th of July. Uh, thank you so much, Tim. Good to be back with you again. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, let's jump right into it because I got to say, uh, going over the pricing is obviously you and I have done here in the last while. Anybody who's acting on this is getting between 60% to 75% off uh, Santo. And I would recommend don't get used to that. But with that said, this is, uh, this is the way to do a 4th of July special. This is going to blow up. So, uh, Barry, thanks for helping out, man. Happy to help. Let's get into our first one, the uh, 1000 series. Okay, the 1000 series was created uh, as an homage to a 1930s military watch that a friend of mine had uh, found at an auction, and he showed it to me, and I said, that's darn good looking. Why don't we make something like that? So we made something sort of similar. It's got a 6 o'clock seconds subdial. Uh, it's in a 40 millimeter size. 
Uh, these watch uh, on a canvas strap with left back. These right. watches have uh, a Japanese loom on the hand, so they're visible in the dark, and they uh, typically carried a retail price of $175, and today, special price, $70. And I'm telling you guys, at uh, to be technical about the penny, at it, it, $69.99, grab Correct. all the Santo you can. Put this away for other holidays or in your collection or whatever. Now, as the graphics rotate, you're going to see that these will move through a uh, 1002 and a 1003 and a 4 and a 5. And if all goes well with the graphics, there'll be some colors on there as well. But uh, 1002, 3, and 4, and actually all of them really are going to have that matte black case. So look how the uh, strap changes color on these. Uh, three of the four will have the black dial. And, of course, Barry, as you know, it in the uh, 1005 series, it looks like, like you went to a uh, like a military green, I guess, the olive. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we called it dusty olive was the name of the color. So the the background you were saying this is actually going back uh, the better part of what I, it looks sounds, sounds like about uh, about eighty years so a little pre World War Two I guess or about World War Two on this correct it was a nineteen thirty three watch that yeah. inspired us and one of the things for those of you and maybe Barry's we're continuing to rotate through the shots here that one of the things that uh, you and I can get into is a little bit of Santo uh, uh, the history you guys have really made. Uh, quite the the name and impact by doing the 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 whole retro thing here and, and updating it. Well, as I, as I mentioned to you uh, when we spoke before, Tim, I can't take credit for the idea. The idea was given to me by a a, a local uh, friend who's a celebrity chef on television and a watch nut. He, there's a huge void in the market on vintage designs. You should develop some vintage designs, and that's uh, that's really how this brand came to be. Well, this is a great I example for somebody, and I mean specifically this 1000 series, because I'm going to go ahead now and move on to the next one. Well, Barry, or really quick, do you know off the top of your head the a millimeter on this? It's a 40 millimeter case. 40. Size. So again, a great whole retro, uh, for those of you who don't know, retro tended to be around 38, 40. So this is a little large for a retro, but largest where you guys want to be. So uh, 40 millimeter and the really cool offset small seconds. So again, you're looking at 1002, 3, 4, or Five is how we're doing that. All right, so moving to the uh, the next example, uh, the next one up is going to be in the 1200 series. So I'll list these for you really quick, um, and it's pretty straight ahead. You're going to see uh, 1202, 03, and 04 is what we're taking a look at. And it seems to me, Barry, as I look at these anyway, um, that for just the one that's really going to stand out, I'm not even saying it's necessarily a favorite, but I got to go for that really interesting green dial you guys uh, put with the uh, the 04 series. Yeah, it's again, it's another use of what we call the dusty olive uh, color for that military look. Right. This is a vintage pilot design uh, that had on the dial, you'll see one through 12, but also uh, you'll see the military numbers as well. And once again, we use uh, Japanese loom on the hand, so they are visible in the dark. And uh, pilot design, uh, Bear, if you can just give us like a real uh, simple uh, definition of that for somebody who is just starting to get into, into watches. What is it that we're looking for? Well, that varies, actually, Tim. You, you know, we've looked at some watches that have uh, very oversized crowns that were uh, from the time period of World War I when they were flying the open cockpit planes. Uh, interpreted in our own way, obviously, at a much more affordable price. And again, guys, let's, I shouldn't say again, I don't think we've done it. Let's talk about the, uh, the what the, the retail on these are and the 4th of July special price. Okay, so these go uh, anywhere from, these are all, excuse me, these are all suggested retail of 250 And at the moment, they are $79.99, excuse me, $84.99, which equates to about a 66% discount off retail. So again, very dramatic discounts, obviously, here, guys. And I believe across this collection, uh, if memory serves, Barry, we are looking at a higher-end hardened mineral crystal, I think, on the collection? That's correct. Now, that's an advantage, by the way, for those of you who don't know. I'll give you at least two reasons. One is that it's going to be more durable than its more famous cousin, the Sapphire, but it has a not identical but similar scratch resistance. In addition to that, when you are looking at retro, frankly, retro is actually... Uh, created many decades ago without the advantage of either sapphire or mineral. They, they were using much more fragile material. But if you wanted to go to which material is the more retro of the two, then uh, the hardened mineral is where you guys uh, want to be. So that's, uh, I think, a great sort of a, 
uh, homage, I guess, for lack of a better word. Uh, you can also meld it in the shapes a little bit easier, and you're going to see that with some of the retro sculpting that's in uh, this particular piece. Uh, Barry, I believe I'm correct in saying that these are uh, chronographs and they're not uh, multifunction, yes? That is correct. They are chronographs, and, uh, which, by the way, makes which makes it an outstanding price at uh, eighty-four ninety-nine. I'll give you these again very quickly in sequence, and keep in mind existing quantity only. Please go via the link you see either to the top or off to the side. You're going to choose between twelve oh two, three, or four. Four, for the record, is the one that has the uh, that that dusty olive color in the dial, and the other two are going to have this great flat charcoal black. So moving to the uh, the next example, we're going to move now into the 2000 series. And I guess one of the uh, the first things I, I can mention here is we are going to be carrying over the concept of the uh, of the chronograph. And uh, this time, Barry, it looks like we have some case variations involved too. We do. Uh, 2001 is a, uh, a gunmetal plating. Uh, on of course every all of our cases are 316L stainless steel, uh, but this is a gunmetal plating on the 2001 in a black black format uh, with a distressed leather strap. Uh, 2002 is uh, a cream dial with a brown distressed leather strap, and 2003 is a little bit interesting. That's kind of a mint green uh, with a black leather strap. So a little, obviously, to, just to emphasize that, that's going to be a bit of a departure from the dusty olive we've been seeing in the earlier collection. Correct. By the way, I also want to get into, and this is a, a, another example where I think this is going to play wonderfully. Uh, as a company, Santo has chosen to go with these beautiful straps. And I, I bring that up because I've collected exotic straps and non-exotic for that matter for a while. And you, you kind of get used to the breaking period if you're going with the lesser expensive stuff. But I got to say, I'm really impressed with the leather you guys chose as, as a, a brand name to bring out on your products. Well, we wanted to express a uh, distressed and worn look. That's the idea. So, so that pieces that are brand new feel vintage the moment you take them. And that, would, of course, explains the the finish that you chose for the leather and uh, and, and and so on. Um, I just love the fact that there isn't any uh, real uh, how to put this. Um, uh, like breaking period to speak of. Uh, th those of you who like myself, if you wear a lot of the, the strap watches, though I ironically I'm not wearing one at the moment, um, that you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Where you just have to, you know, we're going to get through this time period until it kind of breaks in. These straps are butter soft; they just drop right around the wrist, and you are going to appreciate the quality immediately. Oh, and speaking of which, I don't think we actually got into a price point on on this one, so this would be a, a good time to do that. So the uh, gunmetal plated piece uh, carried a standard suggested retail of 350. The other two in the satin brush stainless steel case carry a suggested retail of $325. All of these are presently being offered at $94.99, which represents between a 71 and 73% discount. Get on the email list. You can do that while you're over at talkaboutwatches.com because that email list, which can also get you uh, entry into the closed group on Facebook, is how you get the early access. And they're both, of course, free, and we don't spam you. So you guys should uh, obviously sign up. I'm going to move to the final uh, set of offerings that we're going to do for you guys. And a quick reminder here, uh, this one is over 70, almost 75% off, and you're looking at 2001. 2002 and 2003 are the numbers assigned to each of these watches. So the final series that we're going to be getting into is the 2200 series. And I know that a lot of you guys love it, and I do too, by the way, the, the, the dark cases where they're finished in a jet black or in a dark charcoal black. And if so, I think you're really going to enjoy this particular layout. Uh, I guess, Barry, the first thing, but let's get into price right away here if we can, because uh, this is a segment where some of these are chronographs, but some of these are not chronographs. That's correct. So let me just pull up my notes here. On the non-chronographs, uh, these are 275 Presently in your sale promotion, they're being offered at $75, excuse me, $74.99 retail, which represents a 73% discount, and the chronographs were suggested retails of $295, now at $94.99, which represents almost a 70% discount. Remember, this, like the 2000 series, you're talking chronographs well below $100. 
Yeah, this is, uh, again, all of the uh, of the Santo that's participating in the July 4th special, I don't care which one you pick, they are all steals. If you would like, and I think you, you should, if you haven't tried the brand Santo, this is the perfect opportunity to do it. These are priced to move. Now, I will tell you moving forward, and this is important, don't expect these dramatic discounts like this on, on Santo, or frankly, most of the brands that we do. But when we have an opportunity to, as we are on a July 4th, where they've got some quantities, and, and as a brand, they're excited to, uh, to partner with us. Uh, you guys are the beneficiaries. Check out the quality that Santo is offering, because if you, and I, I think it's true of most of you, you have several watches, if not more so, in your collection in this price range. This is going to blow you away with what kind of quality you guys have in this brand and in this series. Let me go over the numbers very quickly here. Let's start with the non-chronographs. This is going to be real easy. The non-chronographs are 2201 and 2202. So 01 and 02 are non-chronographs. Then we're actually going to jump to a, a, a 2250 series, or more exactly a 22, well, yeah, 2250 series. So 2251 is a chronograph and 2252 also chronograph. Obviously, there's going to be the, the color variations there, and you can see that as we continue to bring the uh, uh, the pictures up. Uh, the, Barry, are we talking more about the, the, the pilot influence or retro? Or what, uh, what's your, your take on these? This was another, you're exactly right, Tim. This was another pilot influence that uh, got us going in this direction. And uh, two versions, as you mentioned, one a non-chrono, one a chrono. Uh, the one thing I would point out to you, though, just so your, so your consumers are aware of it, uh, some of the models have a gunmetal plating, and some of them have a black PVD plating. So if you want me to delineate that, the sure. 2201 is gunmetal, the 2202 is black. When you get to the chronograph, the 2251 is gunmetal, the 2252 is black. And now gunmetal, as a lot of you guys at home obviously know, has really been a major calling card, I think it's fair to say, in the last, so at least the last four or five years or so. And the gunmetal, what I find interesting is there doesn't seem to be anything official about this is gunmetal, because I've seen everything from what you call a dark silver to an almost black. And this one in particular, uh, the, meaning the Santo gunmetal, I think is right in the center of that. And that's where I think gunmetal realistically should be. And if you haven't seen it in person, just think of it as... It, it, you, you would first glance, maybe you would think it was black, but it has this really cool, heavy silver influence in it. And it's got a natural antique sort of a quality. Now, I'm not implying that these are literal antiques, of course. They're all made from surgical grade 316L steel. But the finishes on these are absolutely remarkable. So just look at the numbers, and if we can work it out, we'll put it in the graphic for you as well. So for those of you who are celebrating uh, today on the 4th, thank you for being uh, a part of our audience. We, uh, we greatly appreciate that. And uh, Barry, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this segment up. Man, do you have uh, anything to say to the uh, good folks here in the U.S.? Well, Tim, I want to thank you for inviting us to participate in this. Our goal was to try and introduce our brand to a wider audience, which is why we decided to try an aggressive discount and see if we can't get a few more risks. But mostly uh, on this day, let me wish you a happy 4th, and let me wish your audience a happy 4th of July. So in this segment, we're going to take a look at the Benrist. And a lot of you have already jumped in on this. And if you have, good for you. Smart move. And you are in for a treat when you get this home in just a few days. This is a big watch. This is a 44 millimeter. And with the crown, you're looking at about 48 millimeter. It is assembled in the United States. And to give you an idea of how clean and fresh this is that you're ordering, our source literally carried this out of the vault from the manufacturer. These are not pre-owned. So let's talk about the price right up front and then we're gonna get into some of the specs. As we've talked about in the previous videos and uh, so on, uh, this has a manufacturer suggested retail of $395. And keep in mind that part of that is this was assembled in the United States. Here's the deal. You get this for just $59.99. Now, obviously, we did some research on this. We found some of them that sell for a little over $200. Uh, there's a very few that 
you know, between one and two hundred dollars, somewhere in there. At fifty nine ninety nine, shipping included. We know this is the best deal out there, bar none, and it's by a considerable margin. So let's talk a bit about the watch. One of the things I'll show you right up front here, and then we'll get into detail, is that. Uh, the strap on this is very generous. I wear almost exactly an eight, and I'd say up to a nine, maybe more, but I'll say up to a nine to be uh, safe uh, from that uh, perspective. Uh, the case, as I mentioned, 44 millimeter, 48, including the crown. It already has this very cool weathered effect going on. And I'll show you something else, too, right up front. The unidirectional bezel on this is very, very tight. Now, I'm not saying it's oil-filled, but it has to feel like it is. It's a very high-quality piece, which, of course, comes back to being assembled in the United States as this is. It's also rather heavy, considering what it is. And I'm not saying that this is a monster or anything like that. But it's one of those examples where when you, you get this or any fine watch and you pick it up and you could just feel that it's a serious watch, you watch guys and girls know what I'm talking about, this absolutely has that uh, capability or I should say a feature, and you'll see that obviously if you order this in just a few days. Again, the list on this uh, was three hundred ninety is $395. Uh, we have it uh, by far the best deal out there, $59.99 while it lasts. Now, this one is actually predicated on a uh, an original Benner, was, I believe called a Type 1, and that was used by the U.S. Armed Forces in and around the uh, Vietnam era, give or take. Navy SEALs, I know, used it during that time. So the name of this watch is the 8-6, and that actually derives from a contest that was held several centuries ago. Uh, a guy named John Harrison won, and the, the challenge was to improve the calculation of longitude, because at the time, maritime vessel occupation, shall we say, was a, a really big deal. It was frankly quite dangerous. And he won that by dramatically improving a series of clocks that were used in that calculation. And those clocks ended up being named H1 through H5 after Harrison. So this one is the H6, which is carrying on, in a sense, that tradition. Now, I mentioned earlier, this is a 44 millimeter case, 48, including the crown. Note the crown, by the way. Let's start with that. This crown, in and of itself, is a bit of a complex build. First of all, it's got some beautiful sculpting to it. Uh, it's not so much knurling. It would be almost like a very rough gear edge, but it allows you to navigate this very quickly, which is obviously the point in a watch like this. And there's some beautiful enamel on it as well. You're going to see the enamel. Uh, there's a trench that's actually cut into the, the gear edge, and then there's also this very cool anchor that's done in a very light, almost like a parchment color as far as the enamel is concerned. The dial on this to me is really interesting as well, because at first glance you go, well, that's just a flat charcoal dial. But it, it which it is a charcoal color dial, but there, there's more to it. There, there's a almost like a uh, an asphalt sort of a, a, a surface to it. And so on one hand, it's flat, but on the other hand, you're going to see a bit of a light play as it keeps hitting all of these subtle variations within that uneven surface of the dial itself. Uh, luminous markers, luminous hands. The loom that was used in this is actually in the color. Again, I referenced parchment earlier. Much like the color of the enamel, it's very similar to that. It really lends itself into that overall uh, military feel. Uh, I think instead of parchment, maybe I should be saying like a, a desert tan, that sort of thing. And it uh, makes total sense, especially when you add in that pre-weathered case. This is very cool. Now, unlike most of the H series from Benaris, in fact, I haven't seen another one do this. This actually has a series of color bars that are on the dial, and it's presented a bit below the 12. We see the brand Benaris, and below that, you'll see the red, white, and the blue. Again, the white actually more of that antique kind of a desert sand thing going on. The other examples of this that I found, all for way more money, don't have the uh, the red, white, and blue for some reason. But this one does, which is obviously very cool. Uh, finished work presented uh, on the nylon strap, as I talked about earlier. The buckle, by the way, is coordinated with the case. It's also weathered. And the uh, water resistance on this is 10 ATM. Now, another thing I want to mention is the color of the strap, because it's actually sort of a, for lack of a better way to say it, I guess, it, it's, uh, it, it scintillates in color. On one frame, you'll see it as sort of a dark chocolate, and then it'll move into an army olive kind of a color, and it just kind of goes back and forth. So if you look at some of the still images, it almost looks like I shot different watches, but this is exactly the same watch, and it has this chameleon-like quality in the color and the fabric that was used in the the, the, the strap. And I think you guys are really going to uh, in, enjoy that. I want to show you something else I, th I think is really cool on this, and I hope this is uh, coming across in, in, the, uh, in the shop, is that when you look at this from the top, 
the strap appears to be a two-section strap like almost all straps are, right? So it comes in, in into the, uh, the lug area. But there's actually more to it than that because this has a separate section. Now, it, it's not like those leather straps where you can take the section off, that, that sort of thing, uh, because this is uh, more or less sewn in. But uh, it's a really cool idea, and I'll take it apart to the extent that it can be done. Uh, which is there, all right? So this section uh, comes out with the uh, buckle, as you can see, and then this whole section, I'm not gonna do it at the moment, but as you can see, it'll rise out, and yeah, actually, I will do it, and take this out, and this is the back. Now, the back of this is actually three-dimensionally sculpted, really cool five-point star across the back, and it lists the other, uh, I, I guess, features of the watch would be a great way to describe it. Uh, let's talk about a couple of those, by the way. One of them, uh, 10 ATM water resistant, very cool. And the other is the movement that this contains. Now, of course, that's going to be important. And keep in mind that this is assembled in the United States, but contained within the 316L steel is a Swiss movement. Specifically, this is the Swiss ISA 608 quartz movement. So you've got a rock solid movement in there. The straight up three hand time a day is the goal of this movement. There isn't even a day feature on it. So like I say, rock solid, doesn't take up any excess power. There's no additional complication on the dial. And that's the point of this. It's a straight up time of day, very heavy military influence as I've talked about. The crystal on this is a beautiful example of a very thick, very heavy mineral. And again, with a true military influence, sapphire is really not the way to go. Sapphire is not going to give you the resilience, the durability. You want the heavy, hardened mineral crystal. And this not only has that, but it's further been custom domes. You get the whole lens effect going on. You get a little bit more magnification for dial features, which is obviously uh, very nice. This one absolutely celebrates the holiday. Assembled in the United States, great U.S. military heritage. Listing again for $300. $95. We have it at $59.99 shipping included. And I hope you'll enjoy this because I'm very confident when you get this home, you're going to be blown away by how much wristwatch is here for a very small dollar spent. So enjoy your new Benris. Excellent choice. Hey, this is Abby. Stick around because in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to be coming up with the world premiere of Generation 4 Exoskeleton. So Craig Hester joining us for the big 4th of July soiree. Uh, happy 4th, Craig. Thanks for doing this, man. Happy 4th, Tim. So I am uh, finally back home, and if I look like I am sweaty and uh, covered in dirt, <laughs> that's because I am. Uh, was actually over 100 degrees today in Connecticut, and I thought that only happened uh, in like Las Vegas and places like that. So, uh, combine that with at least the humidity we get here, uh, it was quite the hot day, and I was doing a lot of work around the house. I was actually in the attic today, so you can imagine. Awesome. Just have, I think it was probably 140 up there. Anyway, back home finally. I figured out when I got back from this last trip that I had actually been home only seven days of all of June. So uh, that was quite a busy month. Um, and I've still got travel coming up. Anyway, uh, so that was a great show. Had a lot of fun doing that uh, that uh, in-person yeah, show. Yeah, remote, man. Um, Thank you they, for, for doing that. Uh, we should comment very quickly, by the way, for those of you who haven't seen it, um, or you've been maybe just didn't know it existed, uh, there's quite the, the deals that are still hanging out there. Yep. Yeah, we did the show, and um, we do still have some deals. I did want to uh, mention everybody, if you haven't picked up a pre-patina Energia, I yes. don't know if we're going to be able to get those again. I'm not saying we won't ever be able to get them again, but I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, the last of the pre-patina ones are the ones that are on TAW right now, um, and it could be up to months before we can get more. So at that uh Given the uh, the offer that TAW has right now, and if you've been thinking about picking up one of those, now's the time to do it. There were several things on there that were actually pretty low stock, um, but we didn't sell out uh, with the show, so I want to make sure people go back, uh, rewatch that show, and, and grab those deals before they're gone. We extended the deals through uh, the July 4th holiday. Usually they would be down by now, um, but we did extend them, so you definitely want to go check that out. The other thing we've got going right now is we uh, put up on TA TAW the last of the green Annie Digi Maria, Ener yes. uh, not, not Maria watches. I was going to say Maria Energia, which is two different models. <laughs> Maria, told you over a hundred today. And I was in the attic. Uh, the, the last of the green Maria. Yeah. Which uh, for the record is not a euphemism. True. 
Um, and that is a uh, 50 millimeter. It is the last of those. I think we have less than a dozen. And once those are gone, they are gone. They've got the ESA and a Digi movement in them that is no longer made. So we can't make that watch again. Um, it is not possible. Um, plus that uh, line has... Igor, as, as you know, you saw what we were doing in, in, in Basel, and we talked about it in Vegas. Uh, his focus coming up is on new energias. It's on the expedition Underground Everest. Uh, he's doing some new um, open heart gas limos coming later this year. So that's where his focus is. So you're not going to see new Marias anytime soon anyway. So if you haven't picked up one of those, it is the only Anadigi. If you're not familiar with what that means, that means that the watch has an analog display and a digital display, digital what you typically think of in the old school way of what a quartz watch was, say, in the 70s and 80s with the digital display. And it also has an analog display. There's a multiple functions on this watch. Um, it's the only anti-digi that, uh, that Vasek Europe's ever made. Uh, we are coming up on the last of stock. I don't think they're available pretty much anywhere else. So you definitely want to grab that. We've got that on one of your WMDs, or maybe you're including it in July 4th deals. Yeah, I don't know. It's the July 4th. Uh, uh, let's see if this Craig hasn't been paying attention to the ads. Uh, yeah, it's our uh, <laughs> July 4th uh, big event from uh, from Vostok Europe. And Craig's right, by the way. We're opening with fewer than a dozen of those. And uh, something, and, and Craig, if you would, uh, to delve into this too. Uh, it's not like you're just getting the watch. Uh, you're getting this amazing right. dive case. You're getting multiple yep. straps. You're getting the changing tool. Uh, this is so it's it, it's actually you know, multiple setups you guys are doing. And I would argue if you haven't checked out some of the serious, really heavy Vostok Europe's, this price break is a major reason to get in on it. Absolutely, and it does have. And as you and I both learned, I didn't realize this until just this last JCK Vegas that uh, Igor actually has those cases built at the same factory where they build the Pelican yeah, cases. Yeah, the Pelican so, case. Yeah, it's, it's a serious dive case. Anybody who's got one knows it. Um, these are not just those thin plastic, let's make it look like a Pelican case kind of case. They really are, uh, they are 10 ATM water resistant. They are heavy duty. You can take a hammer to those things. Um, and it does come with, um, I, I believe we've got it with two straps uh, yeah. and also the changing tool. Um, so, you know, you've got a lot going on with that piece. Uh, we are going to be working on some getting some new stuff coming in with you guys and, and hopefully get a show in in July as well. Another show um, for those who keep asking me. Yes, the Berlin Wall uh, Signature Edition <laughs> is in production um, and we will have them in September. Yes, that's a little later than I predicted on Kickstarter. I got to learn to add like six weeks to whatever I put on Kickstarter because there's always something that ends up causing a delay. Um, and uh, we're excited about that. It's well in process. Uh, all the changes that, uh, by the way, I appreciate all the feedback everybody gave us and the, and the changes we are making to the watch, I think, are going to be uh, real improvements. And you're going to see that coming out. And then our next watch, which I put a little teaser up. And if you're not a member of Vostok Europe Timepieces Group on Facebook, you should be. It's a closed group. You do have to ask to join. Um, we're more than 600 members strong now. And I don't think there's a more active Vostok Europe aficionado group on Facebook than Vostok Europe Timepieces. Um, I posted up a little teaser. Our next watch is going to be a military timepiece from Pramzius, and we're really excited about that, and I'll be posting more about that very soon. But right now, you, you definitely want to take advantage of the fact that we extended the deals on the first ever uh, on-location show that was done with TAW, TAW that Tim and I did um, uh, now a few days back. Those deals have been extended through the July 4th sale. You want to get a, a, a pre-patina Energia if you don't have one in your collection. They are fabulous, and they I don't know when I'm going to get them again. Actually, every one of those watches that we had on there was just a really great watch and an opportunity to get a couple of gas limos, which, um, again, that's the only dress line that Vostok Europe still has. And then we've added in uh, the Anadigi uh, green, that really cool green color, uh, Maria uh, from Vostok Europe. So it's kind of an all Vostok Europe, uh, July 4th, uh, Lithuania and, and the U.S. brothers in arms. Yes. Solidarity, Rich. Solidarity. Yeah, there you go. Some Monty Python reference. That green, by the way, is phenomenal. It's like this brilliant, like a superhero green. Very, very cool. Hey, Craig, I'll let you get back to the holiday, man. Thanks for being a part of this. And everyone else, uh, stick around because we got a lot more for you.
All right, so the finale is here, and uh, let's welcome Avi Vieira to the show, who, uh, for the record, did dare me to to do this. So now I am doing it because it's the return of the pod. Avi, thank you for being on the show. Happy Fourth. Happy Fourth to you. Hey, where's your red, white, and blue, Tim? I thought you'd be more right? patriotic with it. I was really torn about that. I should do it, and then I ended up just going with the uh, with the team color. So so here uh-huh. we are. But you did. You look incredibly patriotic and awesome. Well, you know- I had to work for my citizenship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had right. to pay for it. Had to take a really hard test. Most Americans couldn't pass. Like, True. it's a really big deal to me. So, and uh, we are better off because you are here. So, Thanks, thank sir. you. We and uh, I say this on behalf of uh, Watch fans everywhere, and also on, on a personal level. Very cool. Um, and I wasn't kidding about the pod. Uh, for mm-hmm. those of you who don't know, and I'm going to actually turn this over to Abby because you guys all want to hear from her anyway. Tonight we are celebrating the. I uh, almost said the return. It's the world premiere, the official premiere of Generation 4 XO, which means 51 millimeter. And Abby, uh, let's talk a little bit about your background with uh, Exoskeleton over the years. Well, um, strangely enough, I started with you selling these fabulous timepieces, and I have since been able to be the representative for the brand, which actually entailed seeing the factories where these timepieces are actually crafted, being a part of the initial design process, which is just fascinating in and of itself. And I'm just ecstatic, as I know you are, Tim, that we can continue this tremendous brand because from its onset, Exoskeleton has just been unlike any other. And you know, now people that have been collectors, the original members, they can continue to add to their collection. You know, that, that's very well said because one of the ways when people ask me about me being a fan of XO, which clearly I am, uh, I think that the fan base of Exoskeleton is probably the most rabid. They have the most fervor of any single fan base. I'm not saying they're the largest. Right, but right. They, once they're in, they are in. And if you're in that base, then you already know how important Generation 1 and Generation 2 uh, were. And uh, again, I'm going to get your thoughts on this, Abby. But to me, once you picked up that th- those two in particular, the, the craftsmanship, the complexity of those builds, I mean, it was actually art that you wear. Absolutely. And, um, you know, anybody that has ever owned an exoskeleton that has worn one out in public, you know the types of responses that you receive from people. 100% of the time, they're going to ask you what it is you're wearing, where they can get one. Um, They're going to comment that they've never seen anything like it. And of course, this latest generation is no different. And Tim, what I really appreciate is that there's so much of the brand still in it, but it still gives you that fresh new look. It gives you that um, addition to your collection that's really going to set itself apart from your other exos. Well, there's a, a lot, certainly, to, to talk about here, and we're going to spend a few minutes getting into it. Uh, let me mention very quickly, uh, let's talk price really fast, and then we're going to delve in, because part of the fun of XO, and I think Abby will agree with me on this, there is so much to talk about in the watch that price is incidental. This isn't going to be something where you're going to hear us go over and over and over talk about price, because, we, frankly, we don't have time. We've got a lot of other stuff. So I will say this. Uh, they list for about $2,000, or to be exact, $1,995. The world premiere price, which is exclusive to TAW, is $399, and shipping is included. Now, we're going to do two colors for you. One of them we're simply calling blue, because it is, and the other we are calling red. Now, I will tell you that red is a bit more than just red. Red actually also has the black case. It has sections that are layered in yellow gold. So if you really like that, the whole tricolor thing, uh, red is where you want to be, whereas the blue is going to be a bit more of a, a of a two tone. But I love the whole icy uh, blue thing you guys got going on there with the white mother of pearl, and uh, this is very cool. Uh, so, uh, with uh, that being stated, um, actually, Abby, if you're cool, that let's open with the pod. I was completely serious. It's the <laughs> return of the pod. All the yep. purists have to have it. Mm-hmm. Back by popular demand, and right. for those of you that have never felt this, it is ergonomically designed to just feel like a dream in your hand. Even the zipper itself has this slight curvature to it so that it does um, really well in terms of opening it. The zipper is really smooth. Of course, I have my uh, my personal exoskeleton here, which is the blue sapphire. But, um, you know, this this pod, as Tim called it, is even designed to the point that it's streamlined. So you gentlemen that travel a lot, you want to take your watches with you. This will actually fit in a briefcase. So, I mean, you think about that level of ingenuity where all of those things were thought of. And, you know, very few watch cases are sleek and uh, designed to protect your timepiece. But even the insert inside the pod, there's actually a removable outer sleeve so that, you know, your your timepiece, if it's sized, can be... Um, you know, can fit into a smaller segment and be perfectly stated, you know, situated inside the pod. I'm getting all 
Twitter painted over pods here. But but it's great because I feel the same way because the, the first time I, I ever saw the, 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 the pod, I was like, I've never seen packaging like that before. And uh, Abby and I are very fortunate in the sense that we're, we're friends with the original uh, genius. And I love not misusing that term. Uh, that created exoskeleton, and it's the same genus that created the pod. And so this really is ergonomically designed. This really is designed to protect the watch, even if it's sized. And it really is designed to fit in a in a in a business briefcase. It's stuff mm -hmm. I would never have thought of, and it's it's brilliant. So, why, one of the reasons I bring up the pod is for generation three. Uh, which, to be clear, uh, at that time, Exoskeleton was owned by a completely different entity than it was then or now. Uh, they did away with the pod. And in my opinion, they did away with a lot of other stuff uh, that they shouldn't have. And I agree so with that's you. why I'm referencing, and I think you'll uh, uh, endorse me on this, is I, I referenced Generation 1 and 2 because the finishing on Gen 4 is rivaling what happened in Gen 1 and 2. It's back. Absolutely. And when Tim talks about that finishing, you're going to notice that even the... Um, the O-ring, which houses those suspended laboratory-grown gemstones, those gemstones are pristine. We're talking about top-of-the-line cutting. We're talking about top-of-the-line setting. We're talking about individually hand-set elements. When you look, Tim, at the laboratory-grown white topaz that make up the two, four, eight, and 10 o'clock markers. I mean, those have to be individually handset. When you go to a factory and you witness this kind of craftsmanship, I mean, we're talking about people that have extraordinarily fine motor skills, okay? And I mean, me, I don't know about you, sometimes I miss my mouth when I'm holding a coffee mug, okay? So my sure. motor skills are not developed enough for something like this, but it's fascinating to watch them handset everything onto that dial. Even that X that you're gonna see at the 12 o'clock, that has been custom designed for this brand. When you talk about having something that has been designed from the ground up. That's what you have here. And to me, Tim, it's reminiscent of a luxury car. You know, every luxury car brand sets itself apart by having that level of expertise, that level of craftsmanship and design. And Exoskeleton is that in a timepiece. You know, that is, I, I think, a, a, a beautiful observation about this because, I, and I know you've gotten this question over the years, and I certainly do, which is why do watches cost what they cost? And, and I don't think there's a simple answer for that. In fact, it's a rather complex answer. But when you talk about what exoskeleton, I love your comparison to luxury cars, because what are you paying for in a luxury car? And among the things you are paying for is utter originality, power, mm -hmm. uh, there's a sleek quality, and also the hand building, hand craftsmanship. Absolutely. And yep. it, it's something that not everybody else has. And that's mm -hmm. what I think is so cool about exoskeleton. You know, I referenced earlier their rabid uh, fan base, of which clearly I am one is Exoskeleton, I think, set themselves apart from day one by never pleasing everyone. Yes. They set out to make art that you wear. And you know what? If you don't like it, that's fine. But for those who get it, quote unquote, there, there's nothing else uh, like it. And you've probably seen this too, but if you, if you look at uh, like a talk about watches page on social media, specifically Facebook, uh, every day now, somebody is posting, they're going way back into the big heavy cuff from Gen 1 and it's cool. Mm -hmm. And you guys need to keep posting that stuff. And when you get this home in a few days, post it. Oh, since I'm holding it up, uh, let me show you. And let's talk about this, Abby. 50, finally, the number one requested feature, because we had like the, uh, I guess you could call it the prequel to Gen 4, which was the 40 or 42 millimeter. There That's it is. I'm... Now, I love those. But number one pushback, wish it was bigger. Yeah. Totally get it. Here you go, well, and... 51 millimeter. It makes sense, Tim, because one of the things that Exoskeleton did, which you mentioned with Generation 1, it was so big. It was so outlandish. <laughs> it was so over the top. And so, ooh, are you choking? Not anymore. <laughs> So Generation 1 was this massive watch. And so it is that size that so many people love about the exoskeleton. So while this smaller inception was great, if you're a person that maybe isn't comfortable with large timepieces or if you're a lady that like to wear it, this 51 millimeter, which P.S., if you don't speak millimeter, it's approximately two inches wide. It wears like that big, bold, original exoskeleton. One of the things you're really going to appreciate, and you're going to see this on the under gallery of the timepiece, is that it sits actually smaller on your wrist. So it's the O-ring itself that's going to be that 51 to 52 millimeter, but what's actually touching your wrist is a smaller footprint. So it's going to wear extraordinarily comfortably. Yeah. 
And that's the advantage, by the way, for the, for those of you who, who don't know really quick, some watch 101. Um, part of the, the genius in the building of, of Exoskeleton is, as Abby just said, the O-ring is where you get the size, right? And it's also where you get the suspension of those gems, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But there's always a comfort factor that's in the smaller wristwatch. Well, how about a watch that figured out a way to combine the two? And that's exactly what happened here. So I've been showing you guys the blue one. Oh, well, I take this. I'm in the process of taking this off. Let me show you something. I wore almost exactly an eight. I would say this easily fits up to a nine, and I'm actually wearing it loose. I mean, so it's probably nine plus, but I'm just going to say nine and be be safe. And I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the red one on here. Um, Abby, while I'm doing this, let's talk a bit about uh, the uh, the patented uh, O-ring and what that does for us. The patented O-ring was really um, one of the things that put the superlative star on the map. And you're going to notice the exquisite texture around this O-ring. And what I love about it, Tim, and I know it's something you've appreciated over the years, is we're not talking about something that's just been stamped into metal. We're talking about several different components all coming together to craft this. So one of the features that you're going to see is that knurling, that kind of... Um, textured portion of the outermost portion of the o-ring and then you're also going to see those beautiful brushed segments that actually make up those v shapes around the o-ring and um, the gemstones are tension set now one of the most fascinating things to me about exoskeleton as a brand is when this brand was initially created the innovator of this o-ring with the laboratory grown tension set gemstones they were told it couldn't happen that it didn't, you know, th there was no way that this could happen, but they had a vision. They finally found the right people to make this happen. And since then, Exoskeleton has continued this incredible tradition of suspending these laboratory grown gemstones, which I just think is exquisite. And Abby makes such, and here's why I love having Abby on, on the show, because she has been involved with this brand from day one. And she's been to the factory and as big a fan as I am, I've never had the chance to go to the factory to see exoskeleton being made, but Abby has had a chance to do this. The, the advantage of the O-ring, and there's numerous, but the, the, my favorite is, okay, so there's the suspension of the gemstones, but it's because they're suspended literally in space that you get additional light in. Now, I'm going to yeah. take you guys back over to Abby because for those who may not know, Abby has a very serious background in loose gems and set gems and so on. And what is the, the advantage of having a stone suspended uh, like that for the end wearer? You receive full dispersion. So imagine as the light is hitting a top of a gemstone, you're going to receive some of that refraction back. But what happens is as that light is able to move down and around and through because of that suspended stone, you are going to get the ultimate brilliance, the ultimate dispersion, the ultimate color. And, you know, Tim, I know you've experienced this, but you can almost see that stone glow in some lights, you, you know, can. when it's just it's being lit from below and it just seems to come alive. It's absolutely stunning. So, of course, blue and red are your options. The red stone is magnificent, but do not discount those laboratory grown blue topaz. And as Tim so aptly pointed out, it's that kind of icy blue quality. Are you wearing the red now, Tim? I am. And let, let's check it out. Uh, these, again, are, are lab grown. And I want to have Abby get into that a bit because, um, in fact, uh, prior to the show, she was uh, correcting me and rightly so. I've been saying lab created. But as she'll get into shortly, that implies that, you know, you just turn on the thing and there it is. Uh, but they're actually grown. It takes a process. But to hold up the red one, uh, again, you see the very big, the 51 millimeter, the huge presence. Um, they are topaz, but to look at them, and this to me is the beauty of, of the grown gemstones, they're perfect. This looks like perfect pigeon blood rubies. I am not saying they are. I'm telling you they're not. But I am saying they look like it. Now, if these were perfect pigeon blood rubies, you're talking a serious, heavy five-figure price tag to get yes. this just, just for the gems. But that's the advantage. It's the brilliance of how this stuff is, is, mm -hmm. uh, is put together, obviously. And if you're not familiar with gemstones, you know, one of the questions that I get asked all the time is, is this a real gemstone? And the answer is yes. And one of my favorite, um, you know, comparisons in terms of a laboratory grown gemstone and a natural gemstone would be a rose that's grown in a hothouse versus a rose that's grown outside in your garden. So roses that are grown outside, they're going to have all of that exposure to the elements they are going to not turn out perfect. They might be beautiful, but they won't be perfect. And it's the same for a gemstone that's grown in a laboratory. Just like a rose that's grown in a hothouse and it has this controlled environment, you end up with absolute perfection. As Tim mentioned, these gemstones are perfect. Now, if you have them gemologically tested, they will test as 
a genuine topaz because they are a real gemstone. They were simply grown in a laboratory instead of grown in nature. And as Tim pointed out, we're not talking about created. They don't just push a button and out pops a gemstone. You know, this isn't the Jetsons. We don't have those machines just yet. Um, the reality is, is that they have to chemically grow these gemstones. So it's it's in an environment that's similar to nature in terms of the right mineral components, the right heat, the right pressure, and it takes a tremendous amount of time for it to happen as well. So we're talking about an intrinsic value. We're talking about perfect beauty, and we're talking about you owning a gemstone. So this is stunning as Tim pointed out on the red oh my word you're right about that pigeon blood ruby color Tim and you're gonna have eight of those gemstones surrounding that o-ring and on the red I love the contrast so um Tim you mentioned at the beginning of the show that with the red you're gonna have a lot of elements you have that black IP case which you notice the difference of the texture between the knurled outer o-ring and that brushed portion it really gives that depth to the black but then you're going to notice those four points at the 12, three, six, and nine that are done in that brushed gold. It is just beautiful. And to me, the warmth of the gold, the coolness of the black, the heat of the red, all of those elements just synergize so perfectly on your wrist. It's really got some sizzle. You know, that, that's uh, a great way to phrase it because this, it does have the sizzle. If you look at, and to your point with the, with the gemstones, and then you contrast it in, in this particular build with the black, and then you've got these intensely mirror polished uh, V sections. They're finished in the yellow gold. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. Oh, and I wanted to come back and talk about the gemstones for a second, too, because I love how you delve into the reality of, of growing gemstones because it takes a lot of technology and a lot of time and you don't just turn on the you know the machine and they come out and here's the other thing I, I think there's a, a a misconception where people think that if, it, if it's created they're, they're it's like an ice cube in a mold or something and it's not so after they grow them they have to be cut just like a, a very fine diamond or, or ruby or in, in this case to me this looks like the the ice blue uh, sapphire and again we're not saying they're sapphires that these are, are the created rubies but the the uh, rubies uh, the topaz but okay. they it, it's the flash and the scintillation and, and they are absolutely amazing these were cut in, in lapidary condition I mean this is yeah. This, this is an extraordinary opportunity. And seriously, these are $2,000 watches. For those who missed the announcement earlier, uh, they, they're brand new. We have the official world premiere of Generation 4, and they list for $1,995. And right now, world premiere, they are $399. And we have interest-free payments as well, too. So check that out as you are checking out over at TalkAboutWatches.com. Your choice is simply the, the red or the blue. You know what we haven't really touched on, and we need to, is one, uh, very cool movement. Uh, so you've got the uh, the the was it the five one five. So mm -hmm. you've got multiple time zones, and also the mother of pearl you guys selected for this. Absolutely. Um, so Swiss made Ronda five one five, and you do have that GMT, which is really fabulous. I love that addition here, especially because so many of you are travelers. And you know, I was just in Vegas on a work trip, and even just that time change, it was throwing me off. So having that kind of secondary time indicator, really wonderful feature. And then as Tim um, mentioned, the mother of pearl. Oh my word. Okay, Tim, the way that that mother of pearl plays on the blue, yeah. how you get those little flashes of blue, it is the finest grade mother of pearl. You are going to marvel at how remarkably beautiful it is, how all of these elements just play together so well. And it's the kind of thing where if you look at a list of the attributes that this watch has, you almost wonder like, okay, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, I mean, there's a lot happening. The way it works so beautifully on this timepiece, it just gives you all of these levels and layers. Even, we haven't touched on it, Tim, the innermost portion of the timepiece, the case itself. So you're gonna see just above the dial on the inside ring, it's gonna say exoskeleton all the way around. I mean, that kind of attention to detail where there's always some little nuance, something new to experience in your timepiece. Even the back, the back of the watch itself, Tim, you're gonna have all of the um, credentials on your timepiece. Of course, these are limited edition. So you're gonna have your particular number on there, which nobody else owns. I mean, so much. And you know, one of the comments that I've heard so much, um, I don't know about you, Tim, but I've heard people talk about how the watch Watches are worth the full price. You know, sometimes those MSRPs are just this hyperinflated, just kind of like, let's just pull it out of nowhere price. 
people are willing to pay full price for an exoskeleton because and, of the quality you receive. It's worth it. Right. And, and this is the beauty of it. When you get this home, you'll understand why it lists for 1995. When you start to look at the at the actual perfect stones that are used, uh, the crystal is a sapphire coated mineral that's domed. It's treated to be anti reflective. And I'm glad you got into the outer track because I was going to mention that. The, the outer track is mirror polished, and then it's got this perfect micro writing. Uh, those of you who go back with Avi and I to Generation 1 and 2, you know that's the big deal. And here's the, even there, it's perfect. It doesn't, like, say, like, exosca or something. Yeah. I mean, it's just a perfect, of the exact sits right in. It is this art that you wear. And mm -hmm. I'm very excited to have you guys uh, get these home as you will in just a, a few days. Um, Avi, I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap this up, but uh, thank you. Uh, any final uh, thoughts from your side? Um, I don't think we mentioned the 316L stainless oh, steel. Yes. Maybe we did, but the entire um, ergonomically crafted cradle that's going to sit beautifully on your wrist, 316L stainless steel, which is one of the most expensive. I mean, we're talking about intercontinental bridges use this steel. So tremendous amount of quality in all of the material. And uh, these are, by the way, hypoallergenic, uh, I don't think, but, which is the point of 316L, so that's a good thing. And uh, Abby mentioned limited edition, only 50 per color ever to be made for the world. This is beautiful stuff. So we're going uh, to wrap this up, and uh, we're going to wrap up the entire show. So thank you, everybody that tuned in. We wish you a very happy and healthy fourth. You can check out the entire lineup from the show by just hitting the link. It's either off to the side or underneath, depending on the device you're using. And uh, enjoy the savings, because we had a lot of fun putting this together. Abby, thank you for being a part of this, and thanks for helping us wrap this up. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. And thank you, everybody out there. And we'll see you guys back really soon for another edition of Talk About Watches Live.